Good morning, everyone, or afternoon, depending on when you're where you're joining us from. All right. So we're going to go ahead and get things started here today. Thanks for joining us for another Quest Byte. I'm back again. My name is Brandon, and I'm going to talk to you about a couple of really interesting things today. And the theme is paper clips. Sounds boring, but we'll get into some more content here. Before we jump into that, let's uh, play a little game here. You guys can spot the Quapple just like you did last week, or uh, yesterday, rather. We've got another game for you here. So I'm going to put 30 seconds on the clock. Go ahead and get started and see if you can spot that Quapple. Look for the little Apple symbol there with the Quest logo on it. See if you can find it in that mess of colorful paper clips there. I'll give you a little bit more time. We're down to five seconds. See if you can spot it. Did you find it? I'll give you the answer here coming up real quick. There it is, right in with the red, green, and white paper clip. So good job if you found it. We'll have another one for you tomorrow. You guys can uh, play along with the Spot the Quapple game, all kinds of different scenes that we'll set up for you. Some of them may be easy, some of them may be hard. So stick around for some more at 9.30 every day. So what do we got to cover today? We're going to talk a little bit about how metal bends, right? So if you think about paper clips, uh, most of you guys have probably bent a paper clip before, and it stayed bent. And when I was a kid, I always kind of wondered about that. If you bend a piece of metal, what actually makes it stay in the bent position, right? Metal is a pretty hard material. It's not super easy to um, just make something out of metal. But why do we see these things made out of metal everywhere? Well, it's because we can use certain tools to actually create bent shapes out of metal or cut shapes out of metal or even mold them if I were to, say, melt metal down and make it into a different shape. We're not going to cover all that today. Uh, we're going to just talk about the first one there, what actually makes a piece of metal stay bent. And this applies for many other different types of materials as well, but we'll talk about what actually makes that happen. Like I said, you see a lot of these parts pretty much everywhere car bumpers, car fenders, uh, boxes for your computers and electronics. You see all these pieces of metal that are bent up, even things like the excavator buckets on a piece of heavy equipment. How do they take those big, thick pieces of metal that's so hard and actually bend it to create something new? In a lot of cases, that requires a lot of force to be able to do this. So let's talk a little bit about how that's actually going to work. So what makes it stay bent? Is it magic or is it something else? Well, it's actually not magic. You can explain all of this with science. There's many principles behind this through the laws of physics that will allow that piece of metal to stay bent. So definitely not magic, but there's certainly some pretty cool stuff going on behind the scenes that will explain it. So let's take our example here. And you guys can do this if you've never done it before. Find a paper clip. Maybe you've got one laying around. And if you take a quick look here, if I were to try and bend that paper clip, if I apply just a little bit of force, you'll see that it goes back to its original shape pretty easily, right? Just with a little bit of force. But once I start applying more and more force, now that paper clip can stay in its bent position, right? When we talk about applying a force to an object, really what that does is create something called stress. Right? There's math that can be used to explain this. Force applied across an object or an area creates a certain amount of stress. And if we create enough stress, we can do something called um, push the material beyond its plastic limit. Right? I know that we're talking about metal here and throwing the word plastic in there doesn't make a whole lot of sense, but that's a term that we use in engineering that explains when something has been um, when you've applied enough stress to it to create a new shape and it's going to stay that way. You've gone beyond the plastic limit of that material. Certain objects don't behave that way, like our little squishy toy example that we used in another one. 
uh, another quest bite. If I were to try and squish our pineapple, we're applying force to that object, but when I remove the force, an object like this is something that we call elastic, where it returns back to its original shape, even though you haven't applied any more force to it. Metal, if you apply enough force, it's gonna go beyond that plastic limit and stay bent. That's the physics behind how all this works. And we can actually use software tools, that's what we do in engineering, to explain how those parts are going to stay in their shape um, after they've been deformed, right? So if I apply enough force to that paper clip, I've used a simulation here in SolidWorks to show what that paper clip is actually going to look like when I apply the force and then remove it, and I've gone beyond that plastic limit of that material. So the paper clip's gonna stay bent, and we can do a bit more investigation on it here if I wanna see where on the paper clip it's actually going to have those high stress points that will cause it to go beyond the plastic limit. I can see in some of those areas in red there, those are the little spots on that paper clip where it's going to create enough stress um, to cause that paper clip to be permanently deformed. So that's a little bit of what's happening there. And of course, I got to use one of my favorite tools to do this. SolidWorks simulation um, to explain how the paperclip stays bent. Hopefully you guys learned a little bit of something new here on how parts can be made out of metal just by bending them. Coming up, we've got a little project for you here. So if you guys want to get involved and maybe design your own version of a paperclip, get creative with it, think of some new ideas. Maybe you can come up with a paper clip that works better than the ones that are sold today. Uh, create some new shapes, get creative with it. Like I said, uh, you see some examples there of you know, different twisty turny shapes. You can make them out of metal. You can make them out of cardboard, paper, plastic, whatever you have laying around. We'll post a link to this uh, project in the comments so you guys can uh, start working on it and get creative. And we'd love to have you share some of those ideas with us if it's on Facebook or if you want to uh, collaborate with us in some other way, please let us know. We'd love to see what you guys are working on and hopefully it's been a good um, piece of information for you. Coming up tomorrow, Corinne's going to be back to host the show for us. She's going to talk about Rube Goldberg machines. And if you don't know what that is, they are a lot of fun to watch and you're definitely not going to miss want to miss this one. Lots of stuff moving around and knocking things over. She'll explain a little bit about how these work and some of the science behind it. It's gonna be really, really exciting. So I wanna thank you guys for joining us for another episode of Quest Bites. Stay tuned for tomorrow. We've got a lot of uh, other great material for you, so stick around. We'll see you then.